Hello, my name is Abhisar Anand. And my name is Srinivas Sriram. And in this video, we will be covering the Raspberry Pi EEG brain sensor uh, proof of concept. Now let's go over what we are going to cover in today's presentation and demo. To start off with, we are going to be going over a brief overview of how our proof of concept currently works. After that, we are going to go in depth of the hardware that we are using and why we chose to use them. Next, we are going to go over the data visualization demo, uh, which basically is a live demo of how our product is able to stream the EEG data waves, which you'll further mention in later slides. And then finally, we're going to go over our plans for the future and what further things we would like to accomplish with uh, our proof of concept. All right, starting with the overview. Well, our POC currently uses a Raspberry Pi and a Muse2 headband, uh, and they both work together to uh, track EEG waves. And um, those EEG waves come through uh, individual uh, or different nodes throughout an individual. And uh, we also monitor the flow of each wave uh, through a line graph, and we can display it. Now let's go over what hardware we are using. So to actually track the EEG wave bands, uh, as Abisar said, we're going to be using a Muse2 headband. Uh, so what this does is it has different sensors and all kinds of stuff that are able to uh, actually detect EEG waves. And to process the uh, information given from the Muse2 headband, we're going to be using a Raspberry Pi Model 3. So let's talk about why we are using the Muse2 headband. So the Muse2 headband is a general audience product, which is basically used to track human behavior and uh, help people out through metrics such as brain activity, heart rate, and breathing. Uh, for this specific proof of concept, however, we are going to be using a the Muse2 headband as a portable EEG or an electroencephalogram. Uh, so the nodes that uh, this EEG can detect from are the TP9 and TP10 nodes, which are basically uh, positioned behind the ears, uh, the AF7 and AF8 nodes, which are positioned right above the eyes, and the NZ node, which is uh, positioned right above the nose. So how the Muse2 headband works to detect uh, EEG waves from each of these specific nodes is that it has seven different sensors, uh, which include forehead sensors, conductive rubber ear sensors, and reference sensors. And uh, these sensors uh, track each node and measure the EEG waves. All right, now let's go over why we're using a Raspberry Pi 3. Well, since we will be processing and displaying a lot of data that is that we're getting from the Muse2 headband, we thought that a Raspberry Pi would be perfect as it is very portable and a very small size computer that can be easily set up anywhere. Well, we also had a lot of experience working with software on the Raspberry Pi, which we thought that would give us an edge and we would feel more comfortable working on this type of project. So now we're gonna go over a live demo of the data visualization aspect of our POC, which is basically the main uh, aspect of the concept so far. So what it is able to do is that we first start off by connecting the Raspberry Pi and the Muse2 headband, and then we uh, put it on somebody's head. And then after that, we track the EEG waves through the nodes that I mentioned earlier. And you can see that on this graph right here, uh, each node is represented through lines. So as the person is doing different activities, uh, the nodes will respond accordingly, and the Raspberry Pi will then proceed to uh, display a line graph. So now is the demo of the data visualization aspect of our proof of concept. So right now we have the Muse headset, which you can see is uh, has bouncing lights, which means that it is uh, waiting to connect via Bluetooth. So now Abisar is going to run a program called Scan Devices, which basically looks at all the Bluetooth connections available, and it retrieves the MAC address of that specific device. So. Uh, in a bit, you will see a bunch of devices, and there they are. So on the bottom third, you can see Muse-91DD, and the address is given as followed. So now Abisar is going to run a program that basically just connects to the Muse headset and starts streaming. So now he's providing the MAC address, and he's running it.
and it says connected and streaming. And now you can see that the Muse light is not blinking and it's like one color, which means that it's connected. And you can see that this red light, which is used for tracking, is on. So now he's going to run a separate program, which basically just uh, takes the streaming data from the program and it uh, displays it in the line graph that we mentioned earlier. So here you can see uh, Abisar wearing the headset with his ears, uh, with the ear sensors positioned accordingly on his ears. And on the forehead, you can see that the forehead sensors are correctly lined up with the nodes. So now he's going to run the, uh, the graph program. So now, so here you see Abisar is like relaxed and so therefore the EEG waves are not really acting up. So they are relatively, they're relatively stagnant. So they're not moving as much due to his, um, like not his, due to his activity. So they're, the waves are not moving as much. So now we're going to have Abisar uh, wake up and attempt to solve a Rubik's Cube, uh, basically simulating his brain actually doing some activity. So while he's solving that, let's monitor the waves. This might take some time, but they will soon start to increase a lot. You can slowly see them increasing. Yep, especially the AF ones, like the numbers for those are increasing a lot. So slowly. Now let's talk about what our plan is for the future. Starting off, we would first like to deconstruct the data in a much better way where we can actually use that to detect any abnormalities in the brain. What I mean by that is the data that we're currently getting is only a single line. We, but that single line in reality is actually made up of five different frequencies. Starting off with the gamma frequency, alpha, beta, delta, and theta frequencies. Those five different frequencies can help us detect any abnormalities in the data. In, which will help us in the end detecting abnormalities in the brain. And uh, these each frequencies give us different information about what is happening in the brain, and which is why this data from the nose must be broken down into these parts. And after finding out this information from each frequency range, we plan on connecting with different neurologists to discover information from these frequencies in order to diagnose different diseases in a much more efficient way. Now let's talk about how we plan on using machine learning in the future. So after gaining the insights from the neurologist about what diseases can be uh, detected from the EEG data that we uh, end up collecting from the five sub frequencies, uh, we plan on training a machine learning classifier that is able to uh, classify a, a patient's EEG data to determine if he or she has a disease. So um, what uh, some methods that we will be using uh, on the waves in order to extract uh, features that we will use for training the classifiers uh, will be fast Fourier transforms and wavelet transforms. Uh, so we will use these uh, methods of transformation on the specific EEG waves to extract the necessary features that we will use for testing and training data. And as far as actually training our ML classifier, we will need a quality data set so our neurologist can provide us with a good quality data set for us to train our model on. So after we have trained a good quality model with our data set and we know it works, we can then uh, implement our ML model in the real world. Thank you for listening to our presentation.